Hello guys, my name is Annabelle from Annabelle and Ben's Antics and if you're not new here, yeah it's been a while, I'm really really sorry. Thing is, I just haven't been feeling very inspired lately, however one project that I actually started working on pretty much almost a year ago making these sewing patterns was Ariel and Ursula, well not Ursula, Vanessa. I just really like their designs and with the new Little Mermaid movie coming out I really wanted to wear a costume to go and see the movie so of course not knowing which one I'd rather make I just decided to do both. So you guys will be seeing Ariel next week but today we are working on Vanessa and that means it's time to get stitching. Also, what do you think of my Disney villain eyebrows? Are they working for you? Because they're quite amusing to me. Though I had both the pattern and the fabric sitting around for this project for a while, what pushed me over the edge to make this was the purchase of this glow-in-the-dark shell necklace from AliExpress. It cost me all of $5, but has to be one of the best things that I have ever brought from there and gave me the motivation to get started. So I began by cutting out the corset lining as a mock-up, and if you want to see me pattern this corset, please check out my video, The Easiest Ways to Make a Corset Pattern, that I posted literally a year ago. Yeah, this one has been in the works for a while, guys. Then, happy with the mock-up, I rummaged through my fabric stash until I found this crinkly purple fabric. Deciding that there would be no better choice, I rolled it out and pinned everything on and got cutting. I didn't iron it because I was afraid that would ruin the effect the fabric has, but this did make it a lot harder to work with. I then cut out some extra wide binding from the fabric to go around the top and bottom of the corset. Next, I tried to iron the skirt fabric with Sherlock's help. I had meters and meters of this stuff, and if you want to see me buy most of the fabric for both this project and Ariel, please check out my unboxing a giant fabric haul video because nearly everything I'm using for both projects came from there. Anyway, it did get ironed even if it took me ages. I'm cutting out all these projects to take with me and Sherlock just has to nap on top of them. Am I gonna miss you while you're staying at the Kidden Hotel and I'm setting up our new house? Then we were on to cutting out the skirt. For this I used one of my favourite skirt patterns which I actually made for my guinea sacks pumpkin dress nearly two years ago and just extended it to make it the correct length for Vanessa. These were then cut out and I used the space between the skirt panels to cut the bias binding for the skirt hem. After that I flew to Australia, moved into my new house and several months later undid the package of pieces that I had cut out all the way back in the UK. Also I've had some questions about why I did this so let me take a second to explain. Moving countries is expensive at the best of times so my family fabric budget became pretty much zero when I moved, which is fine because I already own a hell of a lot of fabric that I have gathered for a lot of different projects. The problem was I couldn't bring it all along with me as I was charged on weight in my suitcase so by pre-cutting out the pieces of each project rather than bringing the whole roll or several meters of each, I saved a lot of weight in my suitcase and was able to bring even more projects to keep me going until the move is finalized, visas are sorted, and I am back to working and earning that fabric buying money. Anyway, as they had been folded and rolled for a few months, everything needed an iron, though I was careful with the purple to not press it too much again as I wanted to keep the texture. Then I began by pinning the skirt and then pressing the seams on my corset lining to get them laying flat. Next I laid out all my corset pieces and just look at this fabric in proper sunlight, isn't it beautiful? These were then pinned together before I got sewing. This fabric, though slippy, was actually really nice to work with. Having said that, at the start I definitely underestimated its ability to fray and so a good overlocking was definitely needed. Don't mind the wet hair, I did just get out of the shower but for anyone wondering how the overlocking is going because I did ask for you guys' help a few weeks ago with my new machine. I've more or less got it sorted. It's not perfect just yet but it was a bottom tension issue. I think if I loosen it up just a little bit more it will be perfect but if you look at this corset just here you can see we've had maybe three breaks during the whole sewing process so that is a massive 10 out of 10 improvement so far. Just look how neat and tidy those all are. So I have concluded that I must be a complete and utter idiot because I've just been running around my bedroom for at least an hour looking for the bag of scraps that I set aside specifically to make boning channels with and last night I did smart thing which was put them directly under the ironing table and my brain this morning just did not calculate that at all. Let's get on with making boning channels. To make the boning channels I began by emptying the bag of scraps I had sorted the day before and collected all of the same kind of fabric as these are a mix of cotton and polycotton and for this we went with a nice polycotton. I then ironed the scrap fabric before taking my rulers and pencil and drawing diagonal lines across it before cutting these out. The iron was then brought back out and I used my usual pin stabbed into the ironing board technique to make the bias binding being careful to not burn my ironing board this time. Once that was done the pieces were cut to length and pinned onto the corset lining. Very neatly if I do say so myself. So one of the reasons I have done the corset like this is because the outside fabric is so sheer we're going to put the neat side which was going to be against my body towards the outside fabric to keep everything nice and neat and tidy. Then this bit which has all the burning channels is going to sit against my body. It's maybe not the most practical thing but it should work and the only thing that I need to do is find 
an extra piece of fabric just to hide this raw seam at the shoulders. Overall though, I'm super happy with it. It looks really, really neat. And now just need some stitching. Before I got stitching, I had a rummage through the few embellishments that I actually own and found this vintage lace from a job lot that I actually got when I first arrived in Australia. If that's something you want to see, consider joining my Patreon. The link is in the description down below as videos like convention and shopping vlogs are something I'm releasing on there as they don't seem to do well with the YouTube algorithm. Once the lace was pinned on the center front of my dress, I settled down to hand sew it on and try and make this stitches and as unnoticeable as possible. This honestly took ages, but the end result, I think at least, was well worth it. So this is looking utterly amazing. It's also looking way brighter purple on camera than it is in real life. However, one thing, unfortunate thing about old lace when it's got all this beading and sequin stuff on is the fact that a lot of these do come loose and a lot of these are kind of at the point where they are about to fall off. I would have to be very careful when I was stitching everything on. Talking of that, can you see the hand stitches I did? Because I can't and I am super happy about this. Anyway, on to my point. Just down at the bottom here, I have started hand stitching these on and you can see these are nice and firm compared to these ones, which move a lot more. Much like I did with my spider skirt, I am just going along and tightening everything up to essentially keep it from falling off and to preserve this lovely piece of lace because it is gorgeous. Now that this bottom bit is done, I am going to trim this last bit off. Don't worry, I am going to keep it. I'm just not 100% sure what I'm going to do with it right this second, but we can figure that out later. Also, one thing I do have that came with that piece of lace is all these bags of sequins, which I think do have, some of them have some black sequins in. So what I might do is try going through them, picking out the black sequins that I would go with the lace and adding some more to the corset in just random places which would be quite nice. And so with great trepidation, I trimmed the lace. Then it was on to hand stitching all those beads and sequins that they would not be falling off anytime soon. So I knew attaching this little triangle at the top was going to be the hardest bit and my machine typically couldn't even do a proper zigzag stitch. So I'm going in with a needle and thread and just doing it by hand. You can see this side's a lot neater. That's because I've already done it. This side is really messy because I haven't. And then because it's really messy and I'm pissed off about it, we are going to cover it up with sequins and just essentially line it all. I'm also going to reattach these beads on this side that I unpicked so I could go over it with the machine, which are all here ready and waiting. So yes, good side, bad side, we're fixing it. That V was so frustrating to do, so I didn't feel much of it, but once it was sorted, I used some leftover beads and sequins to decorate it as it was looking a little plain. After that, I was finally ready to attach the lining, only to realize I'd never actually gotten around to sewing on those boning channels. Oop. So that's what I did next. And with this, as I'm always struggling with the boning channels on machines after being spoiled with custom millimeter adjustments on my big electric one back in the UK, I decided to give them a go using a zipper foot to get extra close to the edges. And honestly, it worked an absolute treat. So I should never use this boning channel fabric again because I had the same problem with my aerial corset, which is over there when I did that yesterday. But essentially it keeps catching the fabric, which is white and pushing it through to the other side in these little tufts. And it just looks really messy and really untidy so I'm gonna go through trim all these up I've got one or two places on this I just need to hand stitch where I've just slightly missed the boning channel but otherwise we should be good and then we can pin it to the front. So trim I did, and honestly, even after a trim, it still looked a little bit messy, but it's going to be on the inside, and thus I decided to take the attitude of only people who see it need to care, and I decided that I don't. I then pinned the corset front onto the corset lining, placing right sides together before stitching them on. I had to be really careful as I did this, and I had the sleeves to consider as well, but honestly, it came out okay, and those edges were then overlocked to stop them from fraying. After that, I turned it right way around and pressed the seams from the inside to ensure they would lay flat. With that done, the bottom was pinned, including a binding, and that was stitched on and overlocked. Small setback, though nothing too huge or surprising if I'm honest, but just as I was sewing around the outside, we went in a little bit further than I was expecting, meaning that some of the beads not only came off, but over here they were actually broken. So I just need to quickly go in by hand and just reattach them. Gonna have to reattach them through the lining, which is not ideal, but I'd rather do that than not have the beads at all. Overall though, she's looking really good. The beads were hand stitched on and thankfully I had just enough spare that I didn't need to take any off the small bit of remaining lace that I had. I then turned over the binding along the base of the corset, pinning it in place to hand stitch later. So this corset went through a real ugly duckling stage, but now that the last bit of binding is pinned, I think she is looking beautiful, which means rather than hand stitching, I'm going to be a smart person 
and sew the skirt. Why did I sew the corset when the skirt was the first thing I pinned? Honestly, I have no idea, but we are doing it now, straight stitching down each of the panels to keep them together. I'm also 90% sure this skirt fabric is linen, which I'm very excited about as it's not material I've ever worked with before. Once all the seams were stitched, I basted the back seam using an extra wide seam allowance before pressing it open and pinning the zipper on top. Now, earlier when I had been using the zipper foot, I noticed that it wasn't just any zipper foot I was using, but in fact, an invisible zipper foot. So very, very, very excited to try installing a proper invisible zipper for the first time, I went over to the machine and got stitching. And once it was done, the only thing left was to unpick that basting. So this has to be one of the neatest zippers I think I have ever done in my life. I haven't actually sewn the bottom of this because I want to make sure this works first. But uh, yeah, time to find out. Oh, 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 oh. Yes, all the way to the bottom, all the way to the bottom. Boom, baby. Now that is what we call a job well done. So just sew the bottom of this panel and overlock all of those raw edges on the inside. And thus the overlocking commenced. Then we just needed to iron the waistband and the bias binding strips before pinning both onto the skirt and running it all through the sewing machine. Today, Ben had to go to work and I have to come with him because we actually have a meeting with uh, some people this afternoon that we don't have time to drive home and get me and I don't have my own car at the moment, so that's a thing. However, I have brought a bag of goodies to sit here and sew. Am I going to be here for literally eight hours in the car sewing? I might go for a walk. <laughs> there are quite a few parks around here, but overall I probably am going to chill out and sew pretty much the entire day. So wish me luck. Let's see if we can get all this hand stitching done. That day I spent doing all of the hand stitching I had pinned the night before, starting with the base of the corset before moving on to the waistband and the hem of the skirt. And yes, I yes, I did leave the car at one point and go sit in a nearby park once it had warmed up, but honestly I just forgot to film any of the stuff outside so apologies. So today we are not in the car. Yay! Also this costume is nearly done and I am so so excited to wear it. So the skirt, all of the hem, the waistband, everything is done. It needs a good press. The only thing left to do is add the hook and eyes at the waistband to make it seal properly. The only thing left to do with the corset, oh that's Ariel's corset so wrong one. Subscribe to see that next week. The only thing left to do with the corset is add the grommets. I decided the beading around the neck was probably a little bit too much and other than adding the grommets everything just needs a good press around the edges to make all the seams lie flat and we should be fine and dandy so fingers crossed this afternoon when Ben gets home because he's finishing work early tonight we might actually be able to go and do a photo shoot. Mm. The hook and I were stitched on before I at last got started with the grommets by marking up where they needed to go, cutting out a small hole and using my hand grommet press to, well, press them in. Once that was done, I got my favourite black thread and began covering each one in thread by hand to make them stronger and look a hell of a lot nicer. Now, I will be honest here and say that I know I've promised several people a tutorial on how to sew over grommets and this week I just completely forgot. But as I'm currently making Ariel's course here, I promise that I will do it in the next video instead. And with that done, the last thing to do before heading off to the photo shoot was give everything a last press and iron. Put it on my mannequin to keep it nice and brush out the wig that I brought over a year ago which is essentially Vanessa's hair so it doesn't really need any styling. And with that all done, let's go to the beach for the grand reveal.
So Annabelle, how did this photo shoot go this time? This was a really good photo shoot. We have got the best sunset with you and I just sat down to finish watching. And then we got some really good artistic shots. Which I haven't seen all of them, but Ben seems very, very happy. So I am happy as well. The I hope eyebrows you guys agree. They need to come off because they look ridiculous, but they are appropriate for a Disney villain. And I think I'm really happy. To be honest, the only thing I want to adjust about this, seriously, is the shoulders are a little bit too big, but I can fix that. So. I couldn't have asked for better weather when it comes to doing a photo shoot. I mean, this is the sunset, guys. And it is beautiful. I couldn't ask for better weather. And do you know what? This is winter for us. I'm so happy. Well, autumn, technically. Ah, I'm glad we still moved much to better. Australia. Definitely. So this outfit, oh my gosh, I love her. The lace is utterly amazing. I am so glad that I used it for this and I'm so glad that I went along and tacked all the beads down to make them extra strong. Otherwise, I think I probably would have lost a few of them during the photo shoot. The skirt as well is utterly perfect. The pattern for this skirt actually came from my Guinea Saks pumpkin dress that I did like two years ago now at this point and it just works perfectly. With Ursula a lot of people were doing circle skirts or A-lines and I just wanted something a little bit in between the two and I think this is perfect. The only thing I will say about it is that 110% it needs a petticoat underneath. Having said that I've actually used the skirt pattern for several other dresses that are in my to make pile so I figure if we make one petticoat it should work for everything so that's probably next on my list to do. The corset as well is really really nice. I probably should have put some more curvature in the boobs but at the time I think I weighed slightly less and my chest was a little bit flatter which is why it was like that. However it just looks amazing. It is super comfy to wear and my one regret with it is that I didn't adjust these lines a little bit more so that the shoulder piece and this curve line could have basically come up and been one solid piece rather than having to be a bit and have this stitch line at the top. Having said that, it doesn't look terrible. It just leaves a little bit to be desired, which, eh, you know, it happens. The necklace as well for five bucks off of AliExpress. This thing glows in the dark so nicely and it's solid metal and really, really comfy. So we definitely like that. The eyelets came out so, so nicely. I was super proud of them, even if I went a little bit ham and possibly did a few too many. However, as Ben pointed out, the more eyelets I have, the more it's easier to tighten it in a way that is comfy for me. So probably a good thing. I also love the purple fabric that I chose for the bodice. I genuinely don't think this could have gone any better if I had tried. The wrinkles just give it a really nice look. And though I did press an iron, I tried to iron it on the underside only, meaning that we did manage to keep most of these kind of textures that we're liking and enjoying. The only bit that I was a little bit annoyed with is at the front and the V, the zigzag I did, I did have to go in and hand stitch a lot of it to reinforce it because it just came out really messy. I might try covering this up with sequins at some point. However, when I went to do it here, I just wasn't that keen. I also might unpick all the sequins and beads in the little triangle and replace that with something else if and when I can think about what I'm going to replace it with. If you have any suggestions, please leave them in the comments down below. Having a linen skirt as well. I have never made a linen skirt, though I have worn one or two before, and this was blooming amazing. I absolutely love this fabric. It is so, so nice. And if I remember rightly, I'm pretty sure I still have have a decent amount of it left so that's going to have to be used for another project at some point. I also made the decision to use a black shoelace to lace up this corset with and 110% I think I'm going to be sticking with shoelaces from now on because they're very strong, they're very sturdy, they don't look messy and I don't have the constant fraying problem that I seem to get with a lot of ribbons which is nice. The wig as well, I think I probably need to curl it a little bit more, but considering it was my first time wearing the wig, I was very, very happy with this. And my Ursula makeup as well was quite nice. The eyebrows are definitely a look, but they're not one that I am particularly upset about at this point. With that, guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please remember to like and subscribe to see more cosplay vintage and vintage sewing machine content. And if you like this pattern and want to make your own, please do check out my Ko-Fi page. It is free to download, but you do have the option to donate while you're there. I would love it if you would drop me a donation, even if it's just a dollar or two, simply because all those donations are actually going towards buying the fabric for my dream colour changing Aurora dress, which I would really, really like to make before the end of the year. Next week, guys, we're going to be making Ariel to go with my Ursula. So until then, have a beautiful day. Bye. Seriously, these eyebrows are just such a look. And a massive thank you to my Patreons, Ganny Medrose and Kelly Nelson. If you too would be interested in supporting my work, please check out my Patreon link in the description down below, where you can get early access to my videos, free monthly graded patterns, and a special role in my Discord.